Hey everybody, I thought I would do a uh, overview of Payoff Pitch Baseball. I haven't done a video on Payoff Pitch Baseball in a while. So much like the other videos I've done on uh, Status Pro and some others, thought I would go ahead and get this out. For those who haven't seen the game in a while, or not at all, I thought I'd go over a quick overview of the game, the components that come with the game, the uh, strategy behind the game, and then also play a couple of sample innings as well and explain, uh, you know, kind of what's going on with the game and what, what makes this game different from other games or similar to other games. So this is Pay Out Pitch Baseball by Joe Bryant and PT Games. I could be wrong, but I believe they're only selling these PDF version on their website right now. I think they're out of print on a lot of the printed sets, but you can certainly go to the PT Games website and find out. However, if you want to do the PDF, it's a very economical way to do so. You can print off the game components, all the charts, and fast action cards. And if you want to use dice, you can certainly go to your local hobby shop or game store and pick up a pair of 10-sided dice. And most everybody has a pair of Six-sided dice already around somewhere, because that's all you really need are those four dice, two D10s and two D6s. Or you can print off the uh, fast action cards, because this game is multi-talented. You can play it with dice, or you can play it with fast action cards, or you can mix a hybrid of both. I've seen people do that as well. So there's multiple options in the game. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get everything set up, and we'll go over the game itself the game engine, the results via the dice and the fast action cards, what the player cards look like that are printed from PT Games, and also what they look like when you print them PDF on your own computer. So we'll be right back to get this underway. Okay, when you order the game, whether it's through the mail or PDF, you will get a instruction booklet that uh, is about you know, eight to ten pages. It's double-sided, so it's more like about five pages, but it's really really about ten. And it just talks about, you know, how to play the game. It's got different uh, rules for base running and for pitcher stamina and so forth. And uh, just, it does a very good job of doing a playthrough uh, of each play and how to resolve certain things. So the instruction manual is fairly easy to... Um, figure out when you if you buy the game uh, to have it mailed to you you will get this playoff payoff pitch mat I'm not sure if you can print this kind of thing off the PDF or not most people probably wouldn't care either way but I kind of like it especially if I'm playing with the fast action cards it gives a nice little uh, place to keep everything organized uh, but if you're doing the dice you would need two d6s and the two D10s. And basically the way the concept of the game works is that you're going to use the two D6s to check the pitcher card and you're going to use the two D10s to check the batter card. So in this game, the pitcher and the batter both have their say in the at-bat. And based on what the pitcher result is, that's going to tell you where to go on the batter card. So let's look at one of the pitcher cards. Let's look at Blue Moon Odom. And you can see 2 through 12, it has different qualities. Either wheelhouse, in play, patient, tough, ballpark, or defense. So those are the options you can get if you roll the 2d6s. So let's say we rolled an 8. That means we'd be in the tough category. The tough category, as it may sound, is makes it tough for the batter. That means it's a good chance that the batter might strike out. And it's a less of a chance that he might get a hit. Although the better hitters do have some hits in their tough category. So if rolling 8, that means it's tough. Alright, let's say we rolled a 9. 9 would make it patient. Patient, as you might expect, means that the batter has a chance to draw a walk. Because he's been patient with the bat waiting out the pitcher. So if you roll a 9, that means you go to your patient category. If we flip over to a 6, I'm sorry, a 7, 
then it becomes in play, and that means the batter has a chance to put the ball in play. It doesn't mean, well, actually, he's going to put the ball in play somewhere. He's not going to strike out. He's not going to walk. It's going to in, be in play somewhere. It just may not be a hit. In fact, most times on the in play, it's probably going to be an out. But, you know, it's, there are chances, a small percentage chances they can be hits. All right. Let's say by some strange occurrence, we roll snake eyes for two. That would put it in wheelhouse. That means that Blue Moon Odom has delivered up a fat pitch to the batter right in his wheelhouse, and he's ready to take it deep. Well, depending on the type of batter it is, if it's a punch and judy type hitter, he's probably not going to hit the home run, but he has a good chance of getting a base hit. But a power hitter, say someone like Reggie Jackson, would probably take this deep. Not guaranteed, but the percentages are definitely in his favor. All right, so let's roll now for, or let's see what would happen if we roll a 10. If we happen to roll a 10, we go to the ballpark. Now, each season, each team in each season comes with a ballpark card and different qualities within that ballpark card. So when you go to the ballpark card, off the pitcher card, you go to the ballpark, and we're checking to see whether the pitcher has left it in the wheelhouse or whether it's simply going to be an in play. And that's based on the ratings for the ballparks and also whether the batter is left-handed or right-handed. So let's say that uh, Blue Moon Odom was facing Rusty Torres of the Indians. Torres is a right-handed bat. I'm sorry, he's a switch hitter. So in this case, he would be batting left against the righty Torres. I mean, the righty Odom. So he would be a 1 to 72 for his wheelhouse. So he would roll the two D10s, and if it came up as an 86 like it does here, then he would be in the wheelhouse, and we would check a wheelhouse check on Torres's card. However, if, say, for instance, he rolled and it was an 86, that is out of range. That's in the 73 to 99, which makes it in play, and we would check Rusty Torres for an in play result. All right, the last item on the pitcher card would be if we rolled an 11. If we rolled an 11 then that's a defensive check. That means we're checking either the range or the error rating of a particular fielder. Now, how do you know which fielder? Well, the D two D10s will tell you who to check. So let's say we rolled a... Let's say we rolled a... Uh, da -da, let's try a 34. Why not? Okay. So a 34, we would go to our chart, and the number 34 says we're looking at the range of the right fielder because we're in 33 to 35. So what we're going to do then, we would re-roll and on the ballpark chart under range, each ballpark has a range factor. We're going to look at who the right fielder is and in this case it's Reggie Jackson. So we'll pull Reggie Jackson's card out of the lineup stack here. And Reggie Jackson range factor under the R there for right fielder is a B, which is above average. So he's a B rated right fielder. So we go to the ballpark under range and it says 1 to 33 under this B column. So if the next 2D10 roll was between a 1 and a 33, he would get a hit, he being Torres. If it's 34 to 40 to 99, that means Reggie Jackson will make the play. So you simply would roll Two more D10s, and that's a 0-2, so that means it would be a hit because that fell within the 1 to 33 range. All right, let's say we were checking for an error. Let's say the uh, when you did the defensive check that the roll ended up being, uh, let's say the roll ended up being 48. All right, we go to our defensive chart. 48 is second baseman error check. So we go to the second baseman, and in this case, that would be Gonzalo Marquez. So Gonzalo Marquez at second base, his range is an F, but we're not checking his range, we're checking his error. And the lower numbers are worse. You want a high number here uh, on the ballpark card because that 2 is going to provide a lot of errors. 1 to 51, where if he was a 5 rated infielder, he'd only make an error on a 1 to 21. So we roll two D10s, and if it's a 1 to 51, we got an error. 
And if it's 52 to 99, then it's going to be an out. So that's the way that works. All right. So that's all the things that happen on a pitcher card. So now let's look at the batter card. So let's say with Odom that we roll. Well, let's just roll something. Roll to six. Okay. Six is tough. So the six is tough on Blue Moon Odom. So we know that on the Rusty Torres card, we are checking in the tough range, and these are split up between versus lefties and versus righties. Odom is a righty, so in the tough range, we're looking in this block right here. The 1 to 41, and Torres will strike out. A 42, he will get a double. 43 to 51, he'll make a single. Anything higher than 51, he's going to make an out based on the numbers. So, let's roll the two D10s and see what Rusty Torres was able to do with this mock at bat. It's an 11, so how about that? It's an 11 in the tough range. So an 11 in the tough range says that Rusty Torres would strike out. And that at bat is resolved just like that. That's the end of that at bat, and a good chunk of the at bats will be resolved just that quickly. You check the pitcher and the batter. We'll put them together and do another mock roll. Can roll all four dice together and uh, check it out. So we'll do that. Roll all four. All right, and we've got a 10 for Odom, which is ballpark, and we've got a 38. A 38 on the ballpark means we are in the wheelhouse because it's a 1 to 72 rating, and 38 falls within that. So we're going to go to Rusty Torres's wheelhouse check. He's facing a right hander, so 1 to 15 will be a home run. 16 to 18 is a double, 19 is a triple, 20 to 39 is a single, anything higher than 39 will be an out. So I'm going to re-roll the two D10s, and if we get something 39 or less, that means Rusty Torres has got a hit. In this case, it's a 43. So the 43 for Rusty Torres is out of range. So we have to come down here because he has made an out, and we need to find out what kind of an out. So a 43 falls within this 38 to 46 range, which means he just grounded to third base. And if there's runners on base... There's different things that we'll talk about later as far as double plays and fielder's choices and stuff like that. But I mainly wanted to show the interaction between the pitcher and the batter uh, with each at bat. And like I said, the majority, at least 70-some percent of the time, the at bats are going to be resolved just that easily. Where you're going to check the pitcher, the batter, and the result's going to come right off the batter's card and you don't even have to look at a chart. That's going to be a lot of the cases. Now... For those who, of you who may be like me or a little older and your eyes aren't quite as good, if you think the print's a little bit small on these pre-printed printed cards, you can get the PDFs. And so I'll show you a version of the PDFs, and they're also in color. So you can see Tommy Agee from 1969. The print's a little bit bigger. You can see the card itself is a tiny bit bigger, and it's a little bit easier to read sometimes. Another advantage of the PDFs. And you also get the color coding but it's even more pronounced on pitcher's cards. So let's look at Tom Seaver. And you can see right away that tough is highlighted. So you know he's a tough pitcher because he's got toughs right here in the middle of his results. And anybody that knows anything about dice knows that 7, 8, and 9 are your three most likely results when you roll two D6s. So that means he's going to find toughs quite a bit. His wheelhouse is way up here to number 3, and you're not going to roll number 3 all that often. So... Uh, tough is going to be prominent on the Tom Seaver card, which makes sense. He was 25 and 7 with a 2-2-1 ERA, so he was a tough pitcher. But I did want to show that. So if, when you print the, or when you get the PDF versions, you print them in color, they look fantastic. All right, now let's look at the score sheet that came with the game, or which you can download off the website. And this one, I actually participated in something called a Kickstarter for the 1973 season. And one of the perks that uh, came with that was a pre-filled score sheet. So when you get to the 73 season, it's already pre-filled in with the date of the game, the game number for Oakland or whoever team you're playing, the visiting starting pitcher, the home starting pitcher, and then it's got the starting lineup with all their ratings already filled in. And this was, this is what takes a lot of time when you're setting up the game is filling in all these ratings. But here, they're already pre-filled for you. So when I set this game up, all I had to do was go pull the teams out, 
find the players, get them in the right order, and I was good to go. And then, of course, you've got uh, places here for your bullpen on each side. And then, of course, you've got places here for substitutions. And the nice little payoff pitch logo down at the bottom. Cleveland game number 24. Oakland game number 24. May 5th, 1973. So that's a real nice little score sheet. It's I use it for a lot of games other than payoff pitch because I just like the style of it. Of course, this is the only one that's pre-filled in this 1973. So that's why I chose this game or this season for the demonstration because it had the pre-filled score sheets. All right. So got those out of the way. And I'm trying to figure out what is the next logical thing to cover. And how about when we have to go to the charts? We've seen the defensive chart a little bit, and that's the one you're going to focus on primarily, but there are also a lot of other charts to look at. So let's look at what happens when you have to go to one of the charts. So again, we'll come back to our, let's do uh, Milt Wilcox and Burt Campanaris, the starting pitcher for Cleveland and the first hitter for Oakland. All right, let's roll. Well, we'll go ahead and set it up so it turns out to be the way we need it. So let's say, for instance, let's say, for well, let's do this. Let's say Burt Campanaris is already on first base. And Burt Campanaris stole 34 bases on the season. So we want to try to steal second base with Burt Campanaris. How does the game handle that? Well, there's a couple of ways. The one I prefer is an optional jump chart which means that you don't automatically get a chance to steal. You have to earn that. And the way to do that is a jump chart. But again, it is optional. So we take the hold rating of the pitcher, cross-reference it against the steal number of the base runner. So if we look at the cards for Milt Wilcox and Burt Campanaris, the steal number here for Burt Campanaris is a 5. So we're going to be on the steal chart number 5. And we're going to cross-reference that against whatever the hold rating is for Milt Wilcox. Milt Wilcox's hold rating is an 8. So we'll come over here to the 8 under the hold rating. And we'll drop down to where the 5 is. And that's this little part right here. Right there. So 0 to 63, if we roll the 2 D10s and get a 0 to 63, that means he attempts. A 64 to 99, he has to hold. There are some factors where you can attempt with a poor jump, but in this ca case, that doesn't come true on this calculation. So we would roll two D6s, and he got a 51, so that means he got the jump. All right, so that's part one is getting the jump. Now we have to go and check the catcher arm rating and the steal rating. Well, the steal rating for Campanaris is the letter, which is B. So we got the B for Campanaris. And we're going to check on the score sheet the catcher, Dave Duncan, of the Indians. And he is, his arm rating is a 5. See, there's his arm rating 5. So the combination of number and letter we're looking for is, five, is B5. B from Campanaris and 5 from Duncan. Then you go to the chart that talks about stolen bases. There is a steal chart. And he groups the numbers. So we're looking for B and a 5. And that is right here. B5 is in this first column of choices. So B and a 5 is right here. We're going to roll two D10s. If it's a 1 to 2, then 1 to 2 means on the drop means if the field, basically he's going to get caught stealing, but the, but the runner might, or the fielder might drop the ball and he'll be safe. If it's a 3 to 12, that means he stole a base and there might be a throwing error on the catcher. If it's 13 to 17, he got caught stealing on a good throw. And if it's 18 to 99, the, the steal would be successful. But that's because he's a uh, B-rated stealer and Duncan's only a 5-arm. So had Duncan, say, been a 2-arm, then he'd be over here and the safe range would drop to 43 to 99 versus 18 to 99. So the fact that Duncan doesn't have a good arm comes into play and helps Campanaris quite a bit. So we'd roll the two D6s, and if they came up 18 or higher, he would get the stolen base. And in this case, it's a 46, so he would steal, and he would be at second base. All right, let's suppose he didn't steal. Let's suppose he is at first base, 
with nobody out. And Gonzalo Marquez is stepping to the plate. He's the number two hitter in the lineup. So Gonzalo Marquez comes up against Milt Wilcox with a runner at first and nobody out. And he is going to, the, the roll is a nine for Wilcox, which is patient. So we're under the patient category for Marquez, but it only goes to 29. So anything above a 29 is going to end up being an out. So when you look at the two D6s, and we come up with a 46. All right, the 46 says that it's a ground ball to second base, G4, ground ball to second because it's within this range. But the question is, all right, it's a ground ball to second, runner at first. Did we get a double play? Did the runner advance, or is it a fielder's choice? Well, that's when you go back to the original D9 or D6 roll, and we're looking for the total of the two D6s. If the total of the two D6s is less than or equal to the double play rating of both the batter and the pitcher, then it's a double play. Milt Wilcox has an eight double play rating. So does Marquez. However, the D two D sixes was a nine. <clears throat> the two D sixes was a nine, so it's not less than that. So that means it's a fielder's choice rather than a double play. It means it couldn't turn it all the way. Now, had the 2D uh, sixes been either a 12 or an 11, it would not be a fielder's choice. It would be runner advances to second base and batter is out. But had it been, say, a 7, then 7 would be less than the 8 there and the 8 there, and it would be a 4-6-3 double play. So that's how the runner advancement on uh, ground balls and so forth takes place. And... The charts, when you first get into them, they can be a little cumbersome, but then after you play a couple of games, it kind of you kind of get your feet wet and you kind of get uh, to where you want to be. All right, there's other things to do as far as runner advancement, like running advancement on base hits. Okay, let's say that uh, Burke Campaneris did steal second base. So he's on second base with Joe Rudy at the plate. Joe Rudy is at the plate against... Milt Wilcox. Milt Wilcox just put one in Rudy's wheelhouse. So he threw an 11, put one in wheelhouse. The wheelhouse for Rudy is right here. So anything of 53 or less, he's going to get a hit. But in this case, he rolled a 44 on the 2D10s. So the 44 says that's a single. All right. There's... The, the rule book says the proper way to play this is a single off of a wheelhouse. The runner automatically gets two bases. So in this case, the base runner would automatically score because the base hit came out of the wheelhouse. All right, let's say it, turn it around and say that it was found to be in play rather than wheelhouse. So he rolled a seven, which is in play. And the in play result ended up being a 14. If I can get it over here properly. A 14. So the 14 says it's a single in play. Well, it's not wheelhouse, so you don't automatically get the uh, the extra bases. So what you do is there's a runner advancement chart. Runner advancement. And we look at the lowest die of the two D6s, which in this case is the 1. So when there's a runner on second off of a single and the, D6, the low D6 is a 1, he only gets one base. So in this case, Campanaris would only go to third. Now there's a caveat with two outs. Runner rated six or higher advances two bases on a single and scores on a double. So Campanaris' run rating, as you might expect for somebody like Campanaris who runs very well, his run rating is an eight, so that's definitely greater than six. So he would score on that play. And there's a couple of optional ways people do that. Some people don't play the uh, wheelhouse as an automatic two-base advancement. They go to the chart automatically. Um, so it just depends on your preference. Everybody kind of has their own little homebrew way of doing things. And you just have to find the one that fits best for what you need. All right, so let's say... Let's say that... Uh, 
You want to get real detailed on the outs. So let's go to the this other chart about hits and outs and so forth. This is the one that has the defensive chart on it. So let's say we're looking here. We're looking in here. And we want to see what the out was on a particular play. So let's say, for instance, let's find out how we want to handle this. Let's say it was a fly out to center field. So let's say there's a runner on third with less than two outs. The roll was in play for Joe Rudy, but it ended up being a 90. If I can get it turned over here. A, when I can find the nine, it's got to be on her somewhere. There it is. Let's say it turned out to be a 90. Turned out to be a 90. Well, a 90, that's a fly ball to left. Well, can the runner score from third or not? Well, there's a chart down here, an out chart. And we take the two D6s that were rolled, which was a 7. Add them together, you get a 7. So we cross-reference 7. And it comes over here and says it's a short fly. Well, it's a short fly. It doesn't necessarily mean the runner can't score. It just means it's a little bit harder. So we come to this out glossary that talks about short fly. It says, outfielder catches a short fly runner's hold. If game is tied or within one run, runner on third base may attempt to score with an additional minus two adjustment to his run rating. So he could try to score, but he's going to lose two points on his run rating, and you would cross-reference the arm of the outfielder with the speed of the batter and so forth. Probably not a good idea to try that on a short fly, much better on a uh, deep fly. Now, short fly DP adds a little bit extra to it, saying if the outfitter has a five arm or less, he catches a short fly and throws out the lead runner. So that's a double play um, if you got an outfitter with a really good arm. All right, now let's go to some rare plays. There is a what they call a rare play, and there's a rare play chart. In fact, there are two of them. But this one's the primary one. Primary, primary one, I'll say it right eventually. And you get to that by rolling a double zero on your D10. So when you're resolving it at bat, you get check the pitcher, say he's in play, and then you go to Joe Rudy, but you roll a double zero. There are no zeros on their cards, so that's automatic rare play. And it's based on base running situations. Are the bases empty or are there runners on base? So in our case, we had Burke Campanaris at second, so we're going to roll two D6s and see what the rare play is. Sorry about shaking that. See what the rare play is based on the 2D6s. Well, the 2D6s was a 4. So we come over here to 4. It says, scorching line drive to third base. If range is A or B, fielder catches ball and records as many outs as possible. Range C, D, or F knocks ball down infield singles. So that's one of those cases where you're checking an outfielder's range. Uh, if he's really good, he's going he's gonna to catch the liner and double some people off. If it's not very good, it's gonna he's gonna knock it down, but it's gonna be an infield hit. So that um, pretty much covers that area there for rare plays. And like I said, it happens when you get that double zero on the two D10s, and then it also depending on uh, whether it's anybody on base or not. Um, there is an injury chart as well. There's an injury chart that you can go to. So. Sometimes these rare things will talk about a player being injured. Line drive, single hits pitcher, check for injury. So you can go down here and check for injury, and the player cards are rated for their injuries. So look at Blue Moon Odom. He's got a normal injury rating. Someone else might have a prone. If they didn't get a lot of uh, playing time, they'd have a prone. So you're going to check and see whether it, the player is under prone, normal, or durable. So someone like Cal Ripken would obviously be under durable. So... That's another thing on the charts that you can go with. If you're playing a National League game with no DH, then there is a sheet of pitcher hitting cards, and each pitcher is rated with their hitting cards. So here, Blue Moon Odom would be using batting card number three, and his bunt rating would be a C. So number three, he would what it means if he's coming to bat, he would use pitcher hitting card number three, and take these same results the same way you would any other card. So it goes anywhere from pitcher hitting card one all the way up to pitcher hitting card number 15, uh, 16 rather. So you got 16 different values for your pitchers 
15 different possibilities, 16 different possibilities, that your pitchers could run into depending on how well they hit. A Madison Bumgarner is probably going to hit off number 16 because he hits so well with his home runs and so forth. So that is hopefully a decent overview. I know I'm going kind of fast, but it's, it's kind of a lot to cover, and it's really too much to cover in just one small video. But I'm trying to hit the highlights and hit uh, the basic version of the game to show you how it operates, the mechanics of it, and so forth. So we'll go ahead and roll a quick inning just to see how it does in live action. And then I'll come back and do the fast action cards and show it that way as well. We'll do one inning with the dice or half inning with the dice. And then we'll do another half inning with the fast action cards. Now you can do it two ways. You can roll the 2D6s by themselves, cross-reference the pitcher, which in this case is Milt Wilcox. And then kind of gives you a little bit of uh, suspense because you know you're going to be at a certain area on Campanaris, and then you roll the 2d10s to figure it out. Or if you want to save time, you can roll all four together. So we'll do it both ways. So I'll roll the d6, and we get a five. So we know on a five that Mill Wilcox on a five is patient. So we know that under Campanaris, we know that under Campanaris against a righty, we're in this patient block right here. So we need a 1 to a 49 for Campanaris to reach base. Has to be a 1 to 49. So now we're going to roll the 2 D10s. And we get a 9. It's a 0, 9. So that means it's a 9 under the patient category. And that means you're going to walk. When you get low numbers on the patient, it's a walk. When you get low numbers on the tough, it's a strikeout. So in this case, Campanaris will walk. And just for kicks and giggles, we'll go ahead and try to have him steal. So, but you have to get a jump. So again, we're going back to our jump chart. We know that Milt Wilcox has a hold rating of 8. And we knew that uh, Campanaris has a steal rating of 5. So we come over here to the 5 and the 8. And that says 0 to 63. So we need a 0 to 63 or 1 to 63 on this D10s. And we get a 59. So that means he got the jump. And now we're going to try the steal. So the steal is off of the chart that talks about stealing that we looked at earlier. So I'll pull that up as well. This is easier to do when you're not doing a video, trust me. All right, so we know that B5, we're in this range. So we're looking for an 18 to 99 to be a good steal. 18 to 99 on the two D10s. We get a 64, so that is a good steal. So that means Campanaris has stolen second. He's at second base with nobody out for Gonzalo Marquez. So we'll roll Wilcox, and that's a 5. And a 5 says that Wilcox is under the patient category again. So Gonzalo Marquez, patient, he has to get a 29 or less, or else he will make an out. And he got a 7. How about that? That 0-7 did it again. So Marquez gets a base hit. Now the question is, does the runner score? Well, that's where we go back to our 2D6s, and we get a 5. And we go to our runner advancement, and we're really looking for that low number on the 2D6, which is a 1. And with a runner on second and a lead die of 1, you get one base. There aren't two outs, so this doesn't come into play. It's just a one base advancement. So Burke Campanaris would go to third. Marquez would reach on a single, so that puts runners at first and third with nobody out. Neil Wilcox in a little bit of trouble. Let's see what he can do this time. It's a 9. So Milt Wilcox with a 9, and he found his patient again. Apparently he had a lot of walks, because uh, he's finding a lot of patient categories here. So it's patient again for Joe Rudy. We'll roll the 2 D10s, and we get a 32. So Joe Rudy, a 32. 32, and that brings me up to another point I forgot to mention. There is a wild pitch uh, factor in the game whenever the 2 D10s fall between 30 and 39. It's a possible wild pitch. Each pitcher has a wild pitch rating on their card. Milt Wilcox happens to have 30 to 31. Since this is a 32, we ignore that and continue with the result. But had that been a 31, he would have committed a wild pitch. And some people, some pitchers have higher number ranges depending on how many wild pitches they had in the season that's being covered. But in this case, 30 to 31 doesn't fit that, so we continue with the at-bat. A 32 under patient is going to be a single for Joe Rudy. 
So he will single. We go back to the original roll of a nine and that number three, which is the low D6. And we're gonna check the chart for runner advancement with a three. And a three on a runner at first, a three gets one base. Run on The runner that was already on third, uh, Campanaris is automatically gonna score. If there had been a runner on second, he would score as well. But Campanaris is gonna score from third and Marquez is gonna go one base because that lead die was a three. So that puts runners at first and second with nobody out, one run already in. And Reggie Jackson, the batter, and Milt Wilcox is going to see if he can find something other than the patient. Oh, rolled the wrong one. I need the D6s. My bad. So the D6 this time is a 9, and unfortunately found patient again. And we get a 37. So Reggie Jackson, again, it's a 30 to 39, so you check your wild pitch, but again, he's 30 to 31. 37 on the patient is a walk for Reggie Jackson, and that will load the bases with nobody out. So the bases are loaded, nobody out for Mill Wilcox, who's in trouble. We roll a six this time, and six is tough, so that maybe that will help him out a little bit. Darren Johnson's going to have to bat off the tough range. If it's a one to 71, he's going to strike out. And he gets, this time it's a 97, so it's not a, it's not in the strikeout range, it's in the out range. 97 is a fly out to left, so that's where we need to check to see whether what kind of an out it is. Is it a deep fly, short fly, and so forth? Well, the 2D6s come into play on that. The 2D6s were a six. So if you scroll over here, that's a short fly to right field. And on a short fly to right field, you could take the chance of sending the runner, but uh, Marquez only runs at a five, so they're not gonna take that chance. It's simply going to be a fly out to left field handled out there by Charlie Spikes, and there's one away with the bases still loaded. Here's the next pitch to Sal Bando. Oops, I keep going backwards here. Let's do the 2D6s. That's a nine, so again, we're patient. And Sal Bando, a 59. So a 59 under patient Sal Bando is a base hit. That's a base hit, so with the bases loaded, you know one run's gonna score. Let's look at the 2D6s, that low number is a four. So if we look at the base runner advancement, base runner advancement, lead die of four, the runner on second gets one base plus choice. So if we look over at the one base plus choice, that talks about runner advancement with a chance for an extra base. Uh, if you wanted to go that route, we could do that, but uh, usually what I do on something like that is I just hold the runners Joe, uh, let's see here, Joe Rudy doesn't run that well. He's only a five runner, so we'll go and hold him up. And the bases remain loaded with one out. A couple runs already in. Sal Bando got his hit. Here's Gene Tennis. Wilcox is a 10, which is tough. And Gene Tennis off the tough range is a double zero. So there we go. We got a double zero, so that means we're not going to reference the player card. We're going to the rare play. So we're gonna pull up the rare play chart, and there are people on base, obviously with the bases loaded. So we're gonna check this section here, roll two D6s, see what happens. Two D6s are a seven. It says, re-roll two D10 and check ballpark. Okay, we're gonna re-roll two D10 and check the ballpark. Two D10 is a 94. We're gonna check the ballpark. If it's result within the wheelhouse range, re-roll dice and check batter's wheelhouse section. Otherwise, deep fly caught by center fielder, runner advance. So it's going to be a sacrifice fly because the 94 is not in the wheelhouse for Cleveland Stadium. So it's going to be a deep fly to center. It's going to be a sacrifice fly. The run will score. Three runs are now in. There are two outs, but Rudy will score from third. Credit Gene Tennis with a sack fly. Three runs are in, two outs. And now Ray Fossey, the batter. And it's a 10, so we're under tough again for Wilcox. Fossey under tough is a 42. So tough 42, Fossey fought it off and got a base hit. Now some rules say that when a base hit is off a of tough, you only get one base. But I still prefer to use the runner base, runner advancement in this situation. And so runner advancement, we look at the 
low die, which is a four, and a four, you get first base plus choice, but there are two outs. And usually we default to two outs. This says two outs, runner rated six or higher advances, two bases on a single. Runner rated five or lower, half choice. So unfortunately for Reggie, I think Reggie's the batter on this. Actually, it might be Darren Johnson. See, I'm not keeping scores. I'm forgetting who the batter is. I think the runner on second was Darren Johnson. So he has a six rating, run rating, so he would score automatically on since there's two outs. So this inning's really getting out of hand because Ray Milt Wilcox is having a rough time. Ninth man to bat in the order is Bill North. Milt Wilcox trying to get that last out. That's an 11, which unfortunately for Milt Wilcox is a wheelhouse check. But Billy North didn't have much power, so he's only got a 1-2 to two chance for a home run. And that's a 71. So that means he's going to be out. 71 puts it into a ground ball to second. Since it's the third out of the inning, we'll just say he grounded second to first and not worry about a double play or anything like that. And the inning would finally be over. But the A's would score about four runs, I think. I didn't, Like I said, I'm not keeping official score. I'm just kind of running through this. But you can see how... That rolls. And now we'll do Blue Moon Odom. And Rusty Torres will lead things off against Blue Moon. So we'll roll for this. Blue Moon got a 3, which is in play under Blue Moon. And Rusty Torres got a 10. So a 10 and an in play is a base hit. So Torres would start off with a base hit. And this could be a slugfest. Now I'll go ahead and roll them both together just to show that as well. So we've got an 88 on the T10, 2D10s, and we've got a 6 on the 2D6s. Blue Moon is a tough with a 6, and the 88 under tough, Brohammer is going to put it down to shortstop. Ground ball to short with a runner at first. It's a possible double play. To check that, we use the 2D6s. That's a total of 6. If the double play rating for both the pitcher and the batter is 6 or higher, it's a double play. For Brohammer, it's a 6. For Blue Moon Odom, it's an 8. So six falls is either equal or less to both of those. So therefore, it is going to be a, a total of a 6-4-3 double play. And just like that, there are two outs with the bases empty. Here's George Hendrick. Hendrick, a 7 and a 51. So a 7 is in play. And a 51 in play is out of range. So 51 is going to take it to a fly ball to Reggie Jackson in right field. And that's the end of the first inning. So you can see that went through rather quickly, whereas uh, Milt Wilcox had some issues. All right, now let's go to the second inning and we'll change gears with the fast action cards. So we'll talk about the fast action cards before we start playing. The only th downside of the fast action cards is they look a whole lot similar to the batter cards. So if you're not careful, you can get them mixed up. Uh, but the bat the they're double-sided, so there's this side and there's that side. So when you play these, it suggests that you, after three innings, you flip them over and shuffle them. And that way you can keep the randomness, um, you know, the integrity of the randomness going. So the top, number, when you flip this over to start the at-bat, you're looking at the simulation of a 2D6, which would be here a 6, and the simulation of a 2D10, which in this case would be a 92, and you just resolve the at-bat the same way. The difference is... You don't go to charts for runner advancement. It's on the card. All the stuff is on the card here. So let's go ahead and do a sample at bat. And we're back to the top of the order. Burt Campanaris again against Wilcox. So what we're going to have right here, I'll go ahead and put these, let's put them together right here. Actually, it would be better to put them side by side. That way I can see both of them. And we'll just keep the 2D6 or the uh, fast action card underneath. That way you can see everything in one shot, hopefully. So we'll do the first flip, and the first flip is only to see what the 2D6's uh, result is. You flip the second card to get the 2D10. So you basically are rolling, that's the two flips to cover the, the two rolls. So the first flip is a five on the 2D6's. So the five means that we're under patient for Milt Wilcox. Then we're going to flip to see what the 2D10 is going to be for Campanaris. It's a 2. It's a 2. So Campanaris, patient, and a 2 means he will walk. All right, so he's going to walk. 
Now let's see about stealing under fast action card rules. Stealing under fast action card rules. And that's a little bit different than the, the dice because the fast action cards for stealing, you get a, a component here of a range based on pitcher and catcher. And whether the opportunity to steal is excellent, very good, normal, and so forth. So we're going to look at the combination of Campanaris and the catcher, Dave Duncan. And what we're going to get when we do that is find out whether or not he's got an excellent chance, a very good chance, and so forth. So I'm going to pause the video while I... Oh, here we go. I found it. Never mind. Never mind. Don't have to. So instead of looking at the chart like we did with the dice which was this chart here, when you're using the fast action cards, because this is fast action card section, we're going to look at the combination and get a rating for the player. Now we've already figured out that it's a B5 because Campanaris has a steel rating of B and arm rating for Duncan is a five, so it's B5. That means he's got an excellent chance to steal. So. When we flip the next fast action card, we're going to look under the excellent category and see whether he's safe or out. So we flip that next fast action card and it says he's safe. So just like that, he would steal. We don't do the jump. We just let it go as a steal and he is stolen second base. All right, now let's go to Gonzalo Marquez. The flip is a seven. So the seven says we are in play. So we'll flip again and we get a 39. So in play 39... For Marquez is out of range. 39 is going to take it to a fly ball to right field. Now, if you want to be technical, you can flip the next result and look at the out range for the outfielder, and it says it's a short fly. So if a runner was happened to be on third, you could tell this was a short fly, and you would take that same result to the charts that we had previously over here with the short fly and deep fly and that this is what would tell you that all right in this case runner at second he's not going anywhere so it's one away one away and a runner at second and joe rudy stepping to the plate so we flip the card it's the seven and once again that is in play and then joe rudy gets a 38 so an in play 38 that's out of range because it only goes to 32 38 is going to take it to a pop-up to the shortstop. So he pops it up to the shortstop. In this case, that is Leo Cardenas. And there's two away. Here's Reggie Jackson. So Milt Wilcox apparently likes the fast action cards better than the dice. So the next flip is an 8. An 8 is actually going to be this tough range. So we look at Reggie Jackson under tough and a 63. Tough 63 against a right-hander. It's out of range. It only goes to 55. So we come down here to 63. It is a ground ball to second. Now, the ground ball to second, that's the third out of the inning, so we don't really need to check anything. But if we were checking for a double play, let's say it was only one out, this ground ball to second, we're going to flip another fast action card and look at the out range on an infielder. And it says, infielder or the pitcher, it's a ground ball plus advance. So in this case, had there been less than two outs, Reggie would have made an out, but the runner would have advanced to the next base. Had it been a, a dribbler to the catcher, it would have been a fielder's choice. And that, so that kind of tells you, you know, advancement-wise, where they go. You don't have to go look at the chart for that. It's right there on the card. Of course, the downside to the fast action cards is some people just like to roll dice. So, you know, but sometimes what people do is they'll roll the dice to get the results and then... Once the D10 is figured out, they'll come to the they'll flip a fast action card to get the result rather than going to a table. All right, so that was the top of the second. Let's do the bottom of the second using the fast action cards. And we've got Blue Moon Odom back on the mound, and he'll be facing Charlie Spikes for the Indians. So Charlie Spikes will go ahead and start a new flip. That is an eight under Odom, and Odom eight is a tough. So we're under tough. And the flip is a 9. Usually low, low numbers and tough means strikeout. And in this case, that is the case because of 1 to 48. 9 falls within that category. So that means Charlie Spikes is tough luck. He is struck out. All right, here's Oscar Gamble. The next flip is an 8 again, which again is tough under Blue Moon. We'll flip the next result. That's a 72. 
tough 72 is well out of range. Only goes to 36. So 72 tells you it's going to be a fly ball to center field. And like I said, there's nobody on base, so that's pretty much all you need to do. But had you wanted to check what it was, you flip the next fast action card, and it would say short fly out to the outfielder. All right, so that's two up, two down. And now we got Dave Duncan. He's up. That's a nine this time, which is patient. So patient and a 49 for Duncan. So patient 49, he's going to get a base hit. So that's a single for Duncan, two out single. He is aboard for Chris Chambliss. Chambliss, a three, which is under Blue Moon, is in play. Chambliss in play, but it's a 93. So the 93 under Chambliss drops him to a fly to left, and the inning would be over. The other thing they have on the fast action cards is when there is a defensive check or a ballpark check, I should say. Then Actually, it's a defensive check, not a ballpark check. It's a defensive check. Rather than going to this chart and rolling the 2D10s to figure out who's involved, the card will tell you. So the card would say that we are checking the error rating of the shortstop if this was the flip. If that wasn't the flip, we would be checking. Let's check another one. Let's find one. Here we go. This one could be we're checking the range of the third baseman. So the card there will tell you that as well. And I actually learned this game with fast action cards. It took me a while to... Uh, work my way up to the dice because of all the charts were a little intimidating at first but uh, I enjoy both versions actually if I'm in a space where I'm limited uh, limited space to roll dice in then the fast action cards really work good um, particularly if I'm playing at the office at work uh, it kind of will cut down on the space I need and the noise I need or would make rolling dice, so it kind of keeps it a little bit quieter. And, uh, and like I said, you get, and I actually went through and counted up all the, the numbers that are represented on the 2D10s, and the distribution is exactly the way it should be. So the randomness of the cards is not a question. It's not in question because they come up to be exactly what they need to be. So, like I said, these are, um, actually, these are, this is a double set of fast action cards. You don't usually get this many, but when I ordered the game, I got, uh, I ordered it with both the PD, the uh, fast action cards and the dice, but then there was, uh, some of the fast action cards had errors in them, supposedly, so they sent me another deck, um, free of charge. I didn't, well, wasn't even expecting it, but it came, and so now I can put these together, and it just adds to the, to the randomness of the fast action cards. And after three innings, of course, what they suggest is you flip them over and shuffle them. And that helps with the randomness of the game. So it's 53 minutes into this video. I think I've covered at least the majority of what needs to be covered in this game. I'm sure I'm probably missing some things for those folks of you who play this game quite a bit. Um, if I'm missing anything or forgot something, certainly give me a shout out in the comments and I'll make a comment on it or maybe do a a uh, ancillary video to this but I think I've kind of covered the majority of what's on here for the basic person that uh, has never seen the game or wants to try it out um, or wants to just kind of learn about the mechanics of the game like I said you could play and I've seen this happen let's say uh, let's put Rusty Torres back in against Blue Moon and let's say we're gonna roll the dice to get the result of the bat, the at bat resolved. So we have a six for tough, and we have thirteen. Well, that's not a good example because that's a strikeout. So let's do one where we actually have an example here. Let's say, let's say we're going to do a defensive check. So let's say he's an eleven. We'll say that Blue Moon rolled an eleven. All right. If you wanted to, we could not roll the two d sixes or two d tens. We can instead use the fast action cards and figure out whether we're doing the range or whatever. Or another optional way to do that, uh, let's do it with a base hit. How about that? Let's do it. That's probably the better way to make it. So let's say that uh, he got an in play. Let's say Blue Moon was in play. And let's say that uh, in the in play, Rusty Torres managed to get a 12. So, I'm sorry, let's do it this way, a 12, an 11. 
Let me get the 2D6s right here. Let's say it's an 11. So we got an in play off of that 7, and we got an 11, which is a base hit. Rather than going to this chart for runner advancement, checking the low D6 and seeing who gets where, what you could do is simply use a fast action card to determine base runner advancement once the dice rolls have been figured. And all you simply do, since it's a single, is flip it over, and this will tell you where the single went, how many bases you get, you know, for, for the runner advancement. So this is an opposite field liner to, well, let's see, the batter was batting left-handed, so it's an opposite field liner to left field. The runner on first would advance one base, but a runner on second would score. And that's that takes care of the base running right there. You're not looking at a chart. You're not doing anything. So a lot of times what I like to do is roll the dice on these situations. And then when I come up to this kind of situation, I have the fast action cards handy and just go to the next fast action card and see what the result is. So if we do another fast action card on the same result, it would be ball blooped into right field, runner advances one base, runner on second one base. That sort of thing. Suppose it was a double. Suppose he found his double. Instead of, uh, you know, he found that tough range of 42. He happened to roll that 42 to get the double. Well, you flip it over and see what the double says. The double says ground or down the right field line, runner advances two bases. Or runner could runners advance all score. So there's different things that can happen there. So I know I've heard some people say they play the what I call what would be called a hybrid version and I'm certainly have done that before as well. So there's many options to the game to fit your need whether it be dice, fast action cards or a combination thereof. And uh, another good thing is the if you do happen to be able to get the cards from Payoff Pitch themselves or PT Games themselves, card stock quality is excellent. Cards are really nice and shiny. I'm not, I'm not sure my camera is capturing the full essence of that, but they're really good quality. So the component pieces are high quality. And of course the cards, if you get them off PDF, you can print these and I would suggest printing them on 120 weight cardstock paper. That's what I do. And it gives you a pretty thick little um, card to be able to handle. Um, you could do it off regular paper, I suppose, but I think it's worth a little bit extra a couple bucks extra to get the nice card stock to print it on. So we're at 50, almost 58 minutes now. <laughs> so I don't want to go any longer. I think I've kind of beat the horse to death here. Um, I'm doing everything I can think of to hit all the details on this. I hope I didn't miss anything. I'm sure I did because sometimes the complex stuff you can't get to in one video. But hopefully I've covered a gamut the gamut of a lot of things here and uh, hopefully if you haven't seen the game before or played the game before hopefully at peace and interest like I said I'm not sure if they're producing the actual card sets anymore through the mail but they're certainly available on PT Games website as a PDF download for print and play and it's very reasonably priced but the game engine is excellent it's it involves the pitcher and the and the, and the batter and if for some reason you don't like the left-right splits, they have versions of the cards which are just one set of statistics against everybody, so you don't have to do the left-right thing. You can do the basic cards if you wish, and they have those on the site, PDFs. You can differentiate between left-right splits or between the basic. So it's kind of patterned to your preferences of what kind of a game you like and what kind of experience you would prefer to have. So that's it from here. Um, I've kind of run through everything I can think of, and hopefully I did the game justice. And hopefully it's something that uh, if you haven't played it in a while or at all, um, it has piqued an interest. And like I said, it's a solid game. It's not one of these 50-50 games. The batter and the pitcher both get their say-so. So that, uh, along with replay baseball, is the two things that appeal to me in those two games as well as the uh, component quality of the game pieces. So that's going to do it from here. Hope everybody has a wonderful day. Hope you enjoy playing whatever board game you choose to play. The important part is that you're playing and enjoying yourself. And I will see everybody down the road.